Tell a story with the modes of your poi. I know, it sounds wild, but the option of doing this has recently become available for consumer level poi, and I want to show you how to do it. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain, and today I want to lay down some theory on how we can use LED poi modes, and more specifically mode changes, to support our performances. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecha, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Becca Bekkonen. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. At this point, I've done several videos on theory of performance as it pertains to poise spinning, but there's one topic I've very notably not explained in those videos, and that's how LED light modes can have an impact on performance. Glovers have been doing this for more than a decade, and there's an extremely deep and detailed theory of performance around changing light modes on the fly to support gloving performances. Let's talk about how to write a great program and what you need to think about in doing so. This guide is going to focus on single pixel programming rather than graphics or programmable poi, but if you're interested in seeing me produce a video on either of those other topics as a follow-up, please let me know. In general, I think that there are four specific things to consider with the modes that you're using in a specific program. Color, strobe, brightness, and special features. So let's dive in and take a look at each one. First though, in a global sense, I do just want to pass on one piece of wisdom that was passed on to me in working through this process. Less is more. The more mode changes you put into a program, the less clear it will be that there's an intention in the program at all. At a certain point, all of those mode changes become distracting rather than supporting your performance. That said, let's look at what will help support your performance, starting with color. Color is one of the most powerful tools we have for exploring human emotion. And there's no shortage of resources out there on how color maps to different emotions or triggers responses in the human mind. Red can seem very passionate, angry, loving, or dangerous. Green can seem sickly, artificial, envious, or disgusting. Blue can seem sad, pensive, cold, or lonely. There's seriously no shortage of written resources out there on how colors influence human emotion in a variety of ways. I'll go ahead and link to a couple that I found helpful down in the description to get you started. And while we're talking about color, that means we should also talk about color contrasts. Because if you're changing modes between colors, it helps to make sure that people can actually tell that the mode changed. For instance, if you change from red to orange, that change may not read as well as changing from red to blue. Greater contrast between colors helps to clarify that the emotion you're depicting has changed and heightens the drama for the audience. To do this, you want to switch your modes between complementary colors. That is, colors that are across from each other on the color wheel and therefore contrast greatly with each other. Common complementary color sets include red and green, orange and teal, and yellow and purple. And yes, if those color combinations sound familiar, it's because they form the basis of movie lighting and superhero costumes. Want an easy way to pick two contrasting colors? Go pick up a comic book. Of course, it might actually be your whole intention not to let the mode change bring attention to itself. Maybe you'd like to slowly transition the audience between a series of emotions such that when they arrive at a point where they do realize that the colors have changed, they're left with a sense of disorientation or confusion as to how they got there. In which case, transitioning from red to orange to yellow to green and then finally blue might not be the worst call. There's also one other aspect of color to think about that, for lack of a better term, I'm calling biology. Ever notice how in submarine movies the lights are always red? That's not just because it elevates the drama of these scenes, though that is true as well. It's because the human eye adapts more quickly to total darkness if the light it's been exposed to has a longer wavelength, as it does with red. So if you're in a performance environment where the LED poi are the only source of illumination, red light will relax the photoreceptors in your audience's eyes, and green or blue light will shock and dazzle them, requiring a moment or two for them to readjust. This can be 
be used to really dramatic effect and frequently is in the gloving world. But bear in mind, this only works if there isn't another source of illumination in the same space. If there is, then the eyes of your audience have already adjusted to that light source and this effect will not read. Just something to keep in mind, the venues in which we perform have an impact on this stuff too. Of course, there's also something to be said for color fades or multicolor modes. That is, modes in which multiple colors are displayed in sequence. These can be excellent opportunities to highlight several emotions at the same time, perhaps drawing together the themes of your show or displaying more complex emotions with layers and nuance. Again, colors that are similar are going to be harder to tell apart than those that are complementary. One trick I found for programming color fade modes with two or more colors was to have two colors that are relatively similar to each other and then one that contrasts with both to make it stick out and make it clear that a fade mode is being used. Your mileage may vary according to your intention, but in general, I'd say that you want to avoid programming fades that have all colors that neighbor each other on the color wheel. If for no other reason, then it might not be clear that a color fade is being used at all otherwise. Cool, so next up, let's talk about strobes. Strobes vary the length of time the LEDs are turned on and off. Some can create regular gaps in a pattern, and others can make the poised trails seem cluttered and chaotic. And of course, a strobe can be on constantly creating a solid trail for the prop. The first and most important thing to bear in mind about strobes is that they also reflect the precision of your movement. If your tricks are a little bit messy, then that will be made painfully clear if the strobe mode is set to solid. Strobes that leave gaps are much more forgiving to the precision of your trails and patterns. A Glover described things to me as such. Use strobes with gaps in them if the shape of the trail is important. That way the audience gets the best impression of your patterns by connecting the dots in their own heads to create ideal forms of them. Use solid strobes for moments of precision where having attention riveted to one spot at one time is important for emphasis. In addition, I think strobes can tell us a lot about how we're meant to identify the state of mind of the performer. Messy strobes with overlapping colors convey a feeling of anxiety, franticness, or energy. Consistent strobes do much to calm down the viewer, but may also convey a certain degree of uneasiness or a small degree of anxiety. Solid strobes convey more certainty, decisiveness, and stability. All of these are tools that you can use to convey emotional information to your audience and give them clues as to the internal state of mind of the character that you're playing. Finally, strobes can also communicate a lot of information about the energy of a piece, especially in the length of the gaps between lights. Short gaps between lights to me feels way more energetic and engaged. Longer gaps start to feel lethargic and disconnected. At a certain point, it becomes impossible to determine if the visible pieces of a trail are even truly connected anymore. This can be a great way to suggest that the energy level in a piece is winding down. Next up, let's talk about the brightness of the prop. To my mind, brightness is really good at conveying two specific pieces of information to the audience dynamic shifts, and focus. Having a poi go from bright to dim can say a lot about the energy level or state of mind of the character that the performer is playing. But you know what really gets a whole lot of attention? Going from dim to bright right away. This can be used to create instantaneous dynamic shifts akin to turning on a distortion pedal for an electric guitar. You could also gradually dim or brighten up the poi to suggest gradual changes. This specifically removes dynamics from the performance and makes different pieces start to blend together. You can create interesting contrasts when a performer seems very energetic, but the brightness of their prop seems to be fading. Like colors, this is also a tool that can be used in dark performance spaces to shock and dazzle the audience's eyes and create impactful dynamic shifts. Use this feature sparingly though, as too many shifts will desensitize people to what's supposed to be a very important moment. I mean, unless that's your whole intention to begin with. Brightness can also be used to bring focus to specific moments too. Similar to how going from strobes with gaps to solids can be used to draw emphasis to specific moments, so can changes in brightness. Maybe there's a beat that you really want to emphasize, a moment in the choreography you want to stick out, or an effect that you'd like to emulate, like a heartbeat. Brightness can help emphasize all of these different cases and others. Focus and emphasis can sometimes help to highlight a moment in a piece that otherwise isn't landing or reading in the way you want it to. Perhaps a moment of light intensity is the way to go in order to bring it out. 
Finally, in the world of LED props, there are some other special features that don't easily fit into any other category, many of which are special programming functions associated with activating or deactivating an accelerometer. Some of those modes emphasize zero points, that is, stalls or pendulums when the movement of the poi seems to stall out entirely. Others emphasize the poi beginning to move, drawing even more attention to the fact that they are in motion. Your mileage on these features will depend greatly on how much you're using the specific kind of poi movements that they react to. But in the best scenarios, they can draw an enormous amount of attention to moments in your performance where you are playing around with movement and stillness in a variety of different fashions. Play around with these modes and see what they bring up for you. It might be that there are moments in your performance that can benefit from the kind of emphasis that these reactive modes have. So we've talked a lot now about a variety of different ways that we can use mode changes in our POI to support our performances. So now I want to show you an example of this in action. Earlier in the year, I choreographed a piece and wrote a program to go with it that emphasizes different aspects of this performance. I wrote this piece around my very complicated feelings of reconnecting with the world after quarantine and just how much it felt like the world and the people in it had radically changed as a result of the pandemic. I broke my performance up into several sections based upon what emotion I wanted to convey. Red for anger, yellow for excitement, green for disgust, and blue for sadness or depression. As much as possible, I tried to choose changes in color modes that were going to have the greatest contrast from each other to emphasize my own changes in emotional state. I mainly used strobes with gaps in them to convey my own anxieties around reconnecting with the world and overall feeling as though I and all of us are still figuring things out. There is one and only one moment in the piece where the strobe mode switches to solid and it's to emphasize a lot of emotions all happening at once. I created a section in which the poi dim and then turn back on to maximum brightness to emphasize emerging from my quarantine cocoon and the excitement of reconnecting with people. And now, without further ado, my performance of Big Sad. Enjoy.
Cool, so I really enjoyed writing that program and I hope you all enjoyed watching it. Most of the information featured in this video was based on already existing sources of info on gloving and theatrical lighting. I'm going to link to a bunch of the sources that I consulted down in the description and a big thank you in particular to Peter Howard of The Gloving Paradigm for his excellent video detailing the light programming philosophy of impacting and Christian Park for his direct tutelage on this topic. You both are awesome. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to help other people find it and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible without the very helpful support of all of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon. They and the people listed down in the description help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you one and all for your very generous support. And if you out there watching are not currently a supporter, but you'd like to become one, you can do that by heading on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards, and even better than that, you'll be helping me out in my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the whole wide world. Do check that out, please, and thank you. If you'd like to check out some of my reviews for LED poi products over the years, including my first impressions of the Flow Toys Connect app, I'll include a link to a playlist of those videos down in the description or up on screen if you're watching this this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to get out in the flow today, and I'll see you with a new video real soon. Take care. Peace.